there is no such thing as a perfect mouse. That's why we just find the one that's most suited to us. When I make the top mice lists, I factor in everything that I can, but most importantly, whether or not the mouse can be used to play better. That's why I put so much emphasis on the shape and weight. The Logitech G403 has been number one since its release, not because it has the best of everything, but because it's ranked so highly in the most categories. It still has its problems, like being a little off balance, slightly awkward shape, and of course the cable is a bit too thick and heavy. The scroll isn't amazing either, and the side buttons can squeak if you press them in the wrong way. Still, it has a top sensor, it becomes comfortable, your brain adjusts to the imbalance, it feels really good, it has good quality overall, and the left and right buttons are some of the best. Zowie mice have great balance, amazing shapes, but are let down by the buttons and wheel, and some don't like the 3310 sensor. I'm fine with that though, so my main mouse is still the FK2. Why am I telling you about this though? Because the Rival 600 could be the new number one, but it has some issues too. When I first picked it up, it immediately felt comfortable. I actually said out loud, oh I like this. A lot. Now I just want to quickly remind everyone that I do have an affiliate link with SteelSeries. So if you do think this mouse is for you and you're buying directly from them, using my link is appreciated. I'm also an Amazon affiliate, so check the description for more information. Okay, moving on to the materials. It's slightly rubberized on the buttons and back. These middle parts are plastic and these side grips are rubber. There is an unnecessary gap on the right, but my finger seems to avoid it, which brings me to shape. The right side doesn't have the right shape to assist with grip. It's not rounded outward enough. Comfortable, yes, but could slip if that grip doesn't hold properly. For example, if I hold the Zowie FK2 and gradually release my grip, notice it doesn't move. That's not just the material there. That's the shape creating a bit of a ledge, which means when I lift the mouse, it's like a handle I'm getting under. So the Rival 600 could have used something like that, because the rubber is a tiny bit slippery at times. See, as I loosen my grip, it does slip out. It never happened in game, I'm just pointing this out. So that said, the Logitech G403 doesn't really have that either. It's just the rubber it does make the grip a bit easier, so even the current number one doesn't quite have the right shape there. Thankfully, on the thumb side, they do have a minor ledge. Overall, I didn't actually have trouble gripping the mouse. It never slipped, but this is something that could be improved in the next mice. Steel series now have comfort grips though, and these feel really good. They have a good curve, so you shouldn't feel like you're forced to rest your fingers in certain positions, but they'll still give you just enough support to help it feel right. You can see from the base how straight this mouse is. There is very little angle, which makes it a safe shape. Most people should be able to find a place to grip it comfortably anyway. On the top, they took a bit of a risk to give it some flare and features, with the RGB light strips and sides that come off. They knew they would have a gap for this, so I guess they filled it with something to get attention. Quick note, you can use this mouse without the sides. Super slim grip width and lighter. Can I aim it better? Kind of. I mean, I wouldn't recommend using it without the sides for long periods of time, and it's not great without the thumb button side. But every now and then, for say half an hour, it might actually give you a bit of an edge. Kind of like a secret weapon. I found it fun anyway. Back to the top area, it does feel a little awkward, especially if you want to palm grip it. And if you really focus on it, you might actually get annoyed with it. But if you really like the mouse, then no doubt you'll love using it and forget they're even there. So they're definitely not a deal breaker. You'd really have to have a bad day to actually even worry about them. The back has a nice curve to it, with only slight angles that we've seen on other rival mice. Here it is next to the Rival 310. While I prefer some features on the 310, overall the 600 is more comfortable. And that's a standout point for it. Even though it's not perfect, it's just a really nice mouse to hold and use. From the side, we can see the gradual slopes going either way, with the hump standing just over 4cm, or 1.6 inches in the middle. The 310 has the hump more toward the back. The grip width is around 6.2cm, and the length is about 13, so that makes this a large mouse. But due to the width at the top, it actually feels a little more in the medium large range. You can see what I mean from the back. It kind of tapers in a little more than other mice. That may affect palm grip for users with large hands, so be sure to check the comments and see what others have said. So who would I recommend this mouse for? In palm grip, I think 17 to 19.5 centimeters would be decent. Claw grip can go from 16 to 21, and fingertip, I'd say 18 to 21. But ideally for aim, you'd want a hand about 20 by 10 centimeters for this shape and size. Here it is next to some other mice, so you know the general size of it. To me, it looks thinner than the Death Adder, but longer than the G403, and obviously bigger than the 310, and of course much bigger than the Abyssus, which is one of the smaller mice on the market. Sensor-wise, well, it has two. One is the 3360 base True Move 3, which performs extremely well, and the other is dedicated to lift-off height. Personally, I can play with low or high, so for me, this is unnecessary tech, but hopefully it can help some people out there. So I'll test it out. So, rocket jumping is fine, now the lift-off distance. At lowest, it works on my wide desk and cloth pad, but not at all on a Logitech hard pad. On a cloth pad, it's under 1 DVD though. In fact, it doesn't work on the second or third setting on the hard pad either. Still under 1 DVD. On the fourth, fifth, and sixth setting, it still doesn't work on a DVD. 
Now on the 7th, it doesn't work on the hard pad again, or on a DVD, but does on cloth and the white desk. And on the highest option, it just starts to work on a DVD on a cloth pad. Again, nothing from the hard pad. However, if I go into settings with another mouse while the 600 is on the hard pad, it will track on a straight away. And I change that setting, it will track on a straight away at all settings. So I guess it's doing some surface tuning each time we change this setting. That actually might cause an issue for people changing the lift off distance on certain pads. So be careful with that. Or at least make sure you have another mouse ready to change that setting. So far, it seems as long as it's on the pad, when that setting is changed, it will adjust to it. So it should be okay, I just wanted to point that out in case anyone got stuck. As usual, I can't make it spin out, even moving it as fast as I can. And even in the tilt slam test, I can't get it to lose track. The tracking seems good. Pixel by pixel, and it does it smoothly. No problem snipering. There's no abnormal acceleration or deceleration that I can see. And it looks slightly more responsive than the G903 at M filter 10. But I think the mouse feet aren't as smooth, so generally the G903 feels a bit easier to move. In the line test, all seems good. I tested each liftoff height and it changes a little as it goes up, but really not by much. I think they will need to adjust it to go even higher to be of any value to people. Right now, it's either super low or super extremely low. I doubt anyone is going to notice. But personally, I think 1.8mm is the best liftoff distance. Most people won't need to adjust it. The only feedback I've really heard is people want either one DVD or two DVDs of height. Other than that, it's really not a concern. Now for a button sound check. On my copy, left and right sound fairly different to each other. That is actually quite common, but as always, I hope they can do something about it. The left has a bit of a bounce to it, definitely not up to the standard of the G403. The wheel is easy to click in and could make for a good third option, especially for people who grip the mouse with three fingers on top. And it's also got fairly smooth but noticeable steps. It's not the best mouse wheel around, but it is quite good. The side buttons are more interesting, better than the G403. They have a nice snap to them with low travel, and they're small enough to be not in the way, but still easy to press in. And there's an extra one. I think people with bigger hands should be able to find room. Even putting my hand quite far forward, my thumb tip is able to avoid it. That said, with my hand size, I struggle to reach it. The CPI button is out of the way as usual, and has a normal click. In the latency testing, I didn't feel like these scores were as easy to get with the Rival 600. The G903 felt easier, but overall, they're essentially the same. The G903 with the slight advantage. This isn't something I'd worry about, and the testing isn't super accurate. Just a general idea. So overall, a great performance, and while not the best, they are very good. For the build when tapping and shaking it, it seems solid. If you put your ear close to it, there is something rattling a little on mine, but it's hard to hear. Feels well made, but I guess we'll see how durable it is in the future. As for the cable, it's fairly smooth rubber that's quite flexible, over 2 meters or about 7 feet. It's detachable and seems to be a good thickness, as it fits in most mouse bungees, including the Cougar Bunker, Zowie Kamade, and the one from Razer. The weight is 98 grams by my scales, which for this size mouse is expected. Although in a way, I wonder what it would be without the extra sensor. The other top large mice are actually about this weight. I just would have liked to see it a little lighter. But this is also why we can remove the sides, as they give us some weights with it. Eight four gram weights, which should be 32 grams more, but I don't think my scales are accurate. This is the right way to do heavier mice. Start low, then let the users add the weights if they want them. As always, a possible drawback is if you use certain configurations, you might unbalance the mouse. So hopefully you can find one you like. In the software, you can change the CPI from 100, in steps of 100, all the way up to 16,000. Then there's liftoff distance, excel, and usual options. And you can rebind the buttons to suit you. Usual options here too. Keyboard commands, macro editor that allows some editing, but I don't use macros so I'm not going to comment on that too much. Then there's media, mouse, and some others. Lastly, we have the RGB options. It has multiple zones, and you can make your own gradients for each. So that's all good. The color looks smooth and accurate, but it didn't remember my CPI settings. So I don't think it has onboard memory for that. Okay, in conclusion. Wow, this is a nice mouse. Again, it's not perfect, but it's so good in so many categories, it deserves a top place. Factoring all the things that make up a mouse, and how well I think people can play with it, this has almost everything right. The shape, the weight, sensor, buttons, balance, features, maybe not cost, it is a bit expensive, but I think it'll be worth it. The shape is one of the most comfortable I've used. The weight is around the EC1 from Zowie, 
and the Razor Death Adder. So it's large, that's actually decent. The G403 is lighter, but has an imbalance. And the fact is, I aim really well with the G403, even though it's large. So I tried the Rival 600 and G403 side by side, and I actually did better with the Rival 600 overall. It's hard for me to really say why that is, because both mice are too big for me. So I guess it's because the Rival has a better balance and a nicer shape. Still, Series did extremely well on this design. I felt really comfortable with it in game and general use. And it actually beats up the G403 in a few important categories. And that's why, as of January 2018, the Rival 600 is the new number one mouse in my top 40. Again, that doesn't mean it's the best mouse for everyone. I'm still going to use the FK2, and the G403 still could be your best mouse. But I'm looking forward to hearing what people think after they try this one, because even I love using it. Now I just wish they made it in my size. So I hope that helps, and remember, if you're buying one, check for the affiliate links in the description and the comments. Big thanks to SteelSeries for sending it out for review, and letting me announce it on my channel. So for more mouse and tech reviews and gaming videos, be sure to subscribe, then like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.